YouTube Nation, Main Event TV, aka Me TV, aka The Indestructible Huxtable, aka Why Haven't You Bought That Woo Massacre Yet? Today I want to talk about Allen Iverson and the evolution in the NBA. Now before I do that, let me shout out. Shout out to the Flyers. Y'all keep giving me a heart attack. But we're going to keep going. Good win, good win against New Jersey. Anyways, Allen Iverson and Evolution in the NBA. What people don't realize is that Allen Iverson made a monumental step for people, how can I put this, who play with heart. Yeah, I said with heart because a lot of these dudes don't play with heart these days. See, a lot of people, I remember back in my time, a lot of people would say, oh, you were too small to play basketball. You know, you don't have a talent. And then you had to prove them wrong. You had to play bigger than what you actually were. That's what Allen Iverson did in the NBA. He played bigger than what he actually was. And people seem to not give this man the break he deserves. Now, granted, a lot of people call him selfish. A lot of people call him ball hog. Let me tell you something. Allen Iverson had no choice here in Philadelphia at the time. He didn't have anybody. Who, Aaron McKee? Come on, come on, man. Come on, Aaron McKee. Man, I mean, he never had a secondary player who could shoot. It was always him who had to put up the points. He had just a bunch of bodies around him who, you know, who acted like that. So for people to say he was a ball hawk, let me tell you something. When he got traded to Denver and George Carl, another idiot, who said that he could not win with Allen Iverson on his team because he hogs the ball much. Allen Iverson was third in the league in assists. I guess that's I guess that's ball hogging, huh? If you look at his assists throughout the years, he actually gave the ball up a lot. So it's just when crunch, when crunch time came, what is it? As any other player, any good player who's determined, what do they say? Give me the ball. But we're not just going to talk about his athletic accolades. Let's talk about how he changed the NBA. All right? He was the first player, as we know, to really... The tattoos and all that stuff. Once Allen Iverson started getting tattoos and started playing, and people saw he was playing with heart, what happened? Everybody started getting tattoos. Everybody, all of a sudden. Everyone started wearing uh, cornrows and, and, you know, braids and, and tattoos. And, and all of a sudden, everybody, you know, was that guy that they idolized. Allen Iverson. You know, and what did the NBA do? Hell, hold on. Even Tyson Chandler. He even has the same tattoo as Allen Iverson, the only the strong that tattoo on his shoulder. What does that tell you? I'm not going to say it, but y'all know what that is. But um, seriously, even the NBA knew that Allen Iverson was a marketing, like his image was, was cemented in the NBA. And they decided to take advantage of that. You know, they knew exactly what they were getting. Okay, we're going to, you know, it's a black diamond sport. We're going to plug it to, you know, the, the community down there. And people are going to eat this up. They're going to buy the jerseys. I mean, seriously, I'm a big fan of Allen Iverson. So, I'm, of course, I'm going to get me a jersey, you know. But, I mean, really, that's what the NBA did. And then when idiot fans started throwing stuff in the stands, like, you guys have no type of discipline. I don't know where you fans get off throwing things at players anyway you know, in the stands. Then when Ron Artest went up there and started punching people in the mouth, then it was all of a sudden, oh, we got to change our image. NBA cares. Come on, man, they care about your money. But we got to change our image. So who, who, what do we have to get rid of to, to take away the so-called thug image all of a sudden? Because that's what we are now, a bunch of thugs, right? That's what we are. You know, I guess anybody with a tat black and got a tattoo is a bunch of thugs. So... Whatever. But anyways, they looked and said, who can we say that we have to change the way things are? And they looked at Allen Iverson. They said, okay, we got to get rid of the baggy clothes. We got to get rid of the attitude. You can't wear fitteds or other teams' jerseys, throwback jerseys. They, they just try to take pretty much the style out of the NBA and what made the NBA between, what, 2001 and up? I mean, seriously. So you got a bunch of, and I hate to go here, but you got a bunch of conservative white guys telling young black players how they should dress. 
They should dress more professional like Michael Jordan and Charles Barkley did then. I don't know about you, but after I'm done playing basketball, I don't want to wear a suit. I'll wear some warm-ups or something if, if that's what it costs, because apparently you can do that now. But I wouldn't want to wear a suit. Professional. It's a sport. All right? It's a sport. Let the guys be. Let them wear what they want. Just because you got a bunch of people at home who are watching and are insecure. Oh, he's wearing a big chain. Oh, he's got diamonds in his earrings. He's wearing a hat crooked. So what? If they can't see past all that, past the person, then that is their fault. But as that stupid ass David Stern, you know, that's what he does. He tailors to the masses because it's about money. I can't tell you how much I hate David Stern. Can't tell you how much. All right. Now, like I said, most of this wouldn't even happen if it wasn't for Artest jumping in the stands. But as we know, and you know what, Artest, it's wrong to jump into the stands, but that fan was asking for it. You don't throw anything. And fans, if you don't know how to act in a public place, stay home. Stay home. Look what happened not too long ago at the, um, the Sixers-Memphis game this, this year. After the game was over and the Sixers won, they were doing the interviews like you see on the court. And what happened? Fans start throwing stuff at them while doing the interviews. If you don't know how to act, stay home. You want to talk about how these guys are animals and they're thugs and, and they're so, you know, they, they have no morals. But it's okay for you to get drunk and start throwing things. It's a lot of hypocrisy going on. A lot of it. So like I said, Allen Iverson, one of the best players ever in the NBA. One of the smallest guards ever with the biggest heart. You decide to run out of the NBA. Oh, he, he can't be coached. He's unplayable. And come on. He's, uh, he's, he can't be coached. That's why we got to a championship once with him. He's, uh, you know, he, he can't play with others nicely. That's why he's been in the All-Star game how many times? Like I said, you're making excuses. Just because you, the coaches, and the front office don't know how to utilize Allen Iverson does not mean he is a bad player. Now, I feel bad for Allen because of what he's going through right now. That's that's pretty bad. You know, shout out to Allen Iverson. I wish his family, you know, his daughter that's sick, wish him luck. You know, hopefully she gets better. From a human, one, one human being to another, I hope she gets better. You know, I'm not trying to hear all these stories about how, oh, he was drinking and he's gambling. Look, the man has a problem with his family. His wife is getting ready to divorce him. I mean, seriously, his world is caving down. He's losing his career. Would that not drive you to drink? <laughs> seriously. I mean, just leave the man alone. He came back here, and he actually put asses in the seats. Yeah, the Sixers still suck, but we want to see Allen Iverson because we know when we watch Allen Iverson, we are going to get 100%. He's going to play, you know, until he falls out. That's what it's about, playing with heart. And if any of you guys don't understand that, you should take a good look at yourselves. All right? While you're sitting there before the game and dancing and oh uh, and all this and, and, and doing poses and carrying choreography like Paul Abdul had coached you before you came out, seriously, go somewhere with that. When you come out to the court, you come to play. Dead serious. With a game plan, you come to play. You don't get out there and start dancing. That's the way you loosen up. That's a bunch of crap. All right? Grow up. Just like they wanted Allen Iverson to grow up and say that he can't do everything, the rest of you young guys, grow up. Because we're all watching. All of us. And you're making us look stupid. You have, you have to understand, the things that you do reflect us as well. That's how people see. They don't come down here and try to get to know us. So when they see you on TV acting a fool, you know what they're thinking. And then I have to deal with it. So when I go out on a, a daily basis, that's what they're going to see. That's what they're going to think of me. So thank you. Grow the hell up. Anyways, people, if you have a problem with what I said before, you know what to do. Comments, y'all know what to do. All right? I like to discuss this more, but it's nice out and I got to get ready to go. So we can always do a part two if y'all have any problems with what I said. I have no problem with that. So y'all keep safe. Be careful. And remember, take care. Stop acting like fools at games. And I'll talk to y'all then. I'm out.